between 1959 and 1964, this version of the permatension strainer was used on Roger's top-of-the-line snare drums and only went through one minor cosmetic change when the paint was removed from behind the logo. Let's look at some of the simple and functional engineering of this piece and some of its basic maintenance. All you'll need for this simple endeavor is a flathead screwdriver, some grease, a rag, and the piece itself. There are only two screws that hold this permatension strainer together. It comes apart very simply and consists of four basic parts. The cap or face plate, the cam, which in this case has a deeper notch cut out to withstand the weight of the Dynasonic frame, and the Steve Ellis reproduction pinch plate. These pinch plates are extremely well made and are just a little bit deeper to give the screw a couple more threads to bite onto. And then there's the lever, and of course the base. For basic maintenance, just wipe off the excess grease that might be gummed up inside affecting the action. I use a basic white lithium grease, and just using my finger, I'll re-grease any moving parts. The simplicity of the engineering of this piece is what makes it wonderful, and that's most evident upon reassembly. To reassemble, just line up this button and the base with this hole in the lever. And then this button on the lever fits into the cutout of the cam. Then simply install the cap and the two screws that hold all four pieces together. And there you have the sweet simplicity and brilliant engineering of the Rogers Permatension Strainer.